um, one of the topics that we had was talking about the chemistry and the relationship between a caddy and a disc golfer. And I was saying this Mm -hmm. actually in the underground interview that I did. Um, I think that it should be like golf where that caddy studies the course, studies the player and really actually helps them out. And Paul has used Jonas for, is that how you pronounce it? Just want to make sure Mm -hmm. I'm saying it correct. He was, he's used Jonas for all five of his European open wins. And their relationship is kind of, I think, the top level chemistry between caddy and player. Um, when I caddied for Brody, I spent that week obviously preparing for the tournament myself. But part of what I was doing as well, because we played every practice round with Brody, was learning Brody's bag, learning his shots. Because I hadn't seen him play disc golf too much. He only had a few videos out at that point. He was still learning. But I wanted to say, okay, what's he throw this zone like? Or what mid ranges does he, does he like? Because I like buzzes. Brody enjoys meteors and buzzes, but he enjoys mm-hmm. meteors. Um, he throws, he crushes a glow nuke SS. I've never thrown one before. So I had to see kind of how he threw it to where, okay, you're really only going to throw that on hole 16 at Brazos. And so you were talking about the intimidation factor of it. The only thing that was intimidating, I think, was asking Brody saying, hey, dude, I am more than happy to caddy for you if you want to caddy. I was like, I'm going to tee off way before yeah. you guys. Yeah. I don't care about that. Like, Pause for a second. Yep. Because we did get off. We we're talking all caddy stuff, and that's what I wanted to do. How did that go down again? Where, like, how did you become the caddy for, for Brody? You just said it, but I don't want to just glance yep. over it. So you, you, you show up like out of the airport. Ask him? You no, wait. it was like, I think we had kind of like casually talked about it. I know one of the things, um, Jeff Corns was with us a ton uh, practicing. Him and Brody have this like hardcore rivalry between each other and they were talking about it it looked sorry it looked like i just rolled my eyes when you said jeff corns but there was like dust in my eyes so i'm just struggling but jeff's, sorry, jeff's jeff. in the comments pretty ticked off right now that he saw you i'm just kidding um so no they have this kind of like unspoken or i should say very well spoken rivalry between each other and um all fun and games obviously but jeff had talked about him potentially caddying for brody and then Brody and I had talked about me caddying for him. I, I forget how exactly it came up. It's weird, but <laughs> when like, you caddy for yeah. Brody, you don't know how you did, but you just no. I, did. I just more it was it was <laughs> you know pretty casual and just saying like, hey, dude, I'm more than happy to caddy for you if you want one. Um, if you don't, that's all up to you. I just knew that he had obviously used caddies before playing golf and playing golf tournaments. So I was like, I feel like I'm. I I, I love that relationship between a caddy and a disc golfer, and so I wanted to make sure that. Yeah, it was fun. Don't get me wrong. But I did want to take it super seriously. And like, I really wanted to learn his whole bag. I wanted to learn how he played and kind of like his yeah, attitude you towards. Know, you have to. Yeah. And like Hannah said, you have to. He is quiet when you do play around to disc golf. And so I wanted to make yep. sure that when we were playing, I wasn't at all kind of like being distracting. And it, it was cool. It did casually come up and then. Honestly, I, I think it went super well. He said the same thing. He loved it. He asked me in his vlog, what was it like caddying for me? I was like, dude, it was super fun. It's I liked caddying for him more than I liked caddying for Paul. I love caddying for Paul. Don't, don't get me wrong. But with Paul. You felt like you were just like more compatible with him. Exactly. I was more compatible in the sense yeah. that Brody and I can talk about the shot. And it's like, hey, you have two different yeah. options. You can go flick or you can go hyzer. Paul, on the other hand, is the number one player in the world. And so a 990 rated guy giving him advice is more so as in like, I'll say that to him only to hear his thought process because I want to learn it. You know what I mean? Like, but with Brody, it was, I didn't want to say too much and kind of like overpressure him or anything like that. But it was cool because we did talk about every single shot. We talked about, you know, hey, dude. Going up to this putt on hole three, like it's a massive headwind. It's an elevated basket. What are you thinking? He's like, oh, dude, I'm laying it up all day. And I was like, yeah, I love that call that you just made because I didn't have to say that to him because I didn't want to step on his toes and have him be like, oh, what? You don't think I could make that putt? No, that's not it at all. But like the smarter decision obviously was to lay it up. And um, it, yeah, it, it was super fun. I thought there was good chemistry there. And next time we're both at the same tournament, I would love to do it again.